Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of RSM is Quarantine Podcast, full time out with COVID-19. Brian Devaney here with you, Billy Beebe, Will Branza, all stuck at home as we're entering week probably five of this quarantine. And guys, NFL drafts on Thursday. Uh, thank God the NFL has really kept us uh, going uh, during the coronavirus because NFL free agency has been uh, nonstop. And today, as of today, uh, Tuesday, April 21st, uh, it just got crazier with uh, the news breaking recently uh, about Rob Gronkowski back in the league and who else does he go to other than Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Um, and NFL free agency has hit home close to us too, uh, with the Cleveland Browns adding a lot of pieces. Um, guys, it, thank God for the NFL because I, I feel like Gronkowski's only doing this to stay relevant uh, with you know no sports going on, uh, but. It's just, it's him, that's his lifestyle, and he's always looking for the crazy headlines. Yeah, I don't, if you're Tom Brady, why would you want him? I just, I feel like you get a whole new situation. It's like, why why bring, you're not even bringing Gronk in, you're bringing, what, 35-year-old, hasn't played in two years, Gronk. It's like, dude, if you wanted something new, this is not the route to go. Yeah, I don't think Gronk's 35. I think he's a little younger than that. But I get what you're saying. I mean, all the injury and wear and tear that he's taken over the years, then he takes a year or two off. He's taken a year off. And you don't even know what kind of training he's been going through. And honestly, you have O.J. Howard and Cameron Bray at the tight end position already. So now what are you doing? You have three starting caliber tight ends. And then obviously Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. You're getting to the point where you have almost too many targets. And it might create a situation down there that some of the targets don't like. I don't know. I can already see Colin Coward declaring, you know, tomorrow that the Super Bowl is going to be played in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers in it, um, which That's is just the, the furthest thing from the truth. Oh, man, I can't I, wait to get into Coward today. I'm going to just put Coward through a wall today. All right. Well, <laughs> Bill, let's let's get right to it then, uh, because um I mean, it wouldn't be a Browns offseason. It wouldn't be a Browns April without drama uh, involving trades. And, Bill, I, I know where you're going to be going with this, um, but Odell Beckham Jr., um, I feel like ever since he got signed by the Browns, as the discussion around him has always been he is going to leave the Browns. and He, he doesn't want to be here. Um, he's not fit for here. He's not fit for Cleveland, um, which is I feel like is always the case when we have big time stars in the league playing in Cleveland. Um, it was always the case with LeBron. Um, he ended up leaving twice. Where does he go? South Beach, where it's warm and the cultures fits him, and then he goes to Hollywood, where uh, his businesses are. Um, and it's always been there with Francisco Lindor too. Um, we you know we get a good talent. And, you know, he's, he's meant to leave because it's Cleveland and we're not supposed to have good athletes, apparently. Um, but for some whatever reason, and the Browns have tried shining, shooting down uh, the rumors, but Odell Beckham Jr. He's always – why is it that he's always being talked about leaving Cleveland? Yeah, I think that is such a good question. Um just going back, uh, when we traded for him, I was trying to explain it to just non-football people, and I'm like, hey, this is a bigger deal than uh, the Cavs getting Kevin Love, and I'm still going to stand by that. I mean, this guy was a superstar, uh, I mean, two years ago, a year ago even. He's just the biggest name in wide receiving, really. He's still on the scene. You just felt like he just needed a better quarterback than Eli and a better roster, and um, man, the NFL has shifted that it's just easier to get trades done in the, especially the off season is the best time to do a trade in general, but trades are ramped up. I mean, Stefan Diggs just left. Um, 
there's multiple other players that are just more vocal about leaving. And I don't understand um, Odell just it's, – it's never from him either, you know. Um, it, it's yeah. just the rumor bug just follows him that he wants out. He's not happy. The Browns are, are searching – to find a way out. And, and I'm, I'm strung on so many different parts of it because um, we run a two tight end offense this year. That's heavily involves the run attack. So you have Chubb that's going to get the ball. Um, I was looking at stats and it seems like both tight ends for the Browns should get e- about even catches and yards um, for Hooper and Njoku. That's how it worked in Minnesota. Then you have Landry and Odell that want the ball. So that's basically four guys that want the ball. And I mean, let's be honest, guys, if Nick Chubb is working this year, you're going to want to stick him with the ball. So how happy is Odell Beckham going to be if he's, uh, let's say, even with Jarvis, even, I think he might be a little unhappy. And um, I just don't know how that's going to flow for him. I think he's here for the year, this year at least. Then I don't know what the option is. Um, I I don't know how the rumors just follow him. But I have also been thinking about it lately, and I'll let, I'll swing it to Will because I know I've been talking for a minute about this, but um, it's really hard to get a number one receiver. If you were to trade Odell, you don't have a number one anymore. Jarvis is good. He's not a number one. He He's a thousand-yard receiver that's really good, but he's a slot possession receiver. So the idea that you have a number one, probably your best receiver since maybe Braylon Edwards, who was a questionable number one, you guys, you got to respect that. I, I mm-hmm. left out Josh Gordon, but whatever. Um, I don't understand why they think he's going to get traded. The, I would tell you, A, it's only been a year. B, no team wants to pay him high money for four more years. And then I'd say C, um, the wide receiver value just went down. I mean, the Cardinals didn't have to give up much to get Hopkins, and the Rams didn't have to give up much to get Cooks. And I personally think both those guys aren't as good as Odell. So, yeah, I don't see him getting dealt either right now. Um, the only trade, quite like the only um, thing I could see happening is Trent Williams is apparently still on the board for the Browns if they want to pull the trigger on that. And that, when I was reading on that story, it kind of led me to a a trade that is probably a long shot. Honestly, it might not be. It might equal out to be a good trade. Honestly. But what if the Browns decide, you know what, we really want to get something on the other side for Miles Garrett? You give up Odell in that 10th overall for Williams in the second overall. Because the Redskins need a receiver. And then, boom, you got Chase Young. Boom is right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about giving up the 10th. I mean, no, you're talking about giving up. You probably have to throw in another thing. I'm saying the Browns give up 10th Odell and probably like a third or fourth rounder, and they get Trent Williams in the second overall. Do you rather have Trent Williams or OBJ, though? Well, I mean, so I'd rather have Trent Williams and Chase Young than OBJ, yes. That's what you got to look at. You're not getting just Trent Williams in that trade. You're getting Chase Young. Yeah, no, that's that, I mean, that's a good – I mean, it's, I feel like that's unrealistic at this point. That's why I said it's a long Trent, – Trent, Trent Williams has been in discussion about coming to the Browns the same way the Davion Clowney has been talked about coming to the Browns I, I, I just feel like that's never going to happen I said it's long See, here's what I want to add here guys is envision the scenario where Odell is like more than happy with us right like where we thought we'd be yeah I just keep like breaking that down and it's like um 1500 yards 12 wins and 22 touchdowns and a playoff game and like man how hard is that to envision right now that's, I mean, that's a huge stretch, I feel like, with Cleveland right now. Right, and it's just like, then odds are just he's not going to be happy by the end of the year. It's just, I don't know what to say. I love having the dude, but it's just, it, more and more it just feels like. And I, I think that goes back to what Colin, Colin Cowder has been talking about, where the Browns are trying to make this work. They're trying to force it, you know. And, I mean, so many times you saw Baker – I think it was like, I don't know what game it was, but three times on the same possession in the red zone, Baker went to lock him and he couldn't make the catch. Because, I mean, they 
opposing defenses know you're we're gonna try and force the ball to them. So you put your best corner on them, and I mean that's the reason he had such an awful year last year. Yeah, and if he even if he's doing well, you know, I guess then you feel like yeah they're forcing him the ball right. And if he's not doing well, it's like, well, why are we paying $20 million for a decoy? I don't even know what – I have to look at what his contract is. But um, if he's not doing well, but the Browns are, then it's like you're paying all this money for a decoy. Which if if you've seen him, like the Jets game, he was incredible, so good. And the Titans game, he was really good too, but Baker was forced in the ball and we lost. So it's like you kind of have yin and yang. Yeah, I mean, it's you either try and make the uh, the best superstar in the league. I mean, he's even more than a football superstar. He's a global icon at this point in his career. You try and make him happy just to have him for, you know, your branding and to keep yourself relative, or do you really try and just go for wins and – I think that's what's been holding him back. I mean, you're you're right, Bill. Do we even really need him for our offense? Is a huge question. Because with Hunt and Chubb, you're gonna have to try and force feed those two uh, the ball all game and all season. And with two tight ends now, Kevin Stefanski's offense really doesn't revolve around two or three wide receivers. Yeah, but we are young. And most of our money is not spent. We have the highest cap remaining. We have thirty-seven million dollars unspent right now, at where we sit. So it's like, why not? Why not keep him? Ride him out. If he's unhappy, he's unhappy. I mean, he has his best friend on the other side of him. Him and him and Baker clearly get along. And Stefanski doesn't seem like a big personality. He just he just doesn't seem like anything, you know? It doesn't seem like him and Baker, him and Odell are going to get into it. They just seem like they'll just be neutral, you know? And he still I can't confirm but did they fire the wide receivers coach? I am not sure about that. Cuz I know that was their college wide receivers coach. So it's like how much more oh, do you want? LSU, yeah. I'll have to look that up too. And Odell's making just below $20 million a year. Um, Adam Henry, Chad O'Shea? No, Adam Henry works for the Cowboys now, so... Yeah, they did let him go. So that's unfortunate, but it's like... I just don't think... I think the only better situation for him is in a bigger franchise, mm-hmm. and that's it. And he had that, so it's like... Your options are slim, man. There's only like five big market teams... And you already went to one of them. And the recent talk was going to the Vikings. And yeah. Minnesota is kind of the equivalent to Cleveland almost. But, yeah, it's – it's you love having that number one player name in the league. I mean, we, we had that with LeBron for 15 years. Um, well, close to 15 years. But um, – We'll, we'll see. And it's it's going to be a really interesting season to see how he goes, but um, it's not the only thing that the Browns are doing this offseason and dealing with. Uh, um, Andrew Barry, in his first stint as a general manager, has done a pretty decent job of acquiring talent and free agency, uh, notably uh, tight end Austin Hooper, right tackle Jack Conklin to add to that offensive line, and Backup quarterback Case Keenum, um, who has playoff experience um, and I guess will be a good mentor to Baker Mayfield. Um, But I think that number, the huge signing was definitely uh, Austin Hooper, a tight end uh, to have because David Nchoku guys injured last year and didn't really put up the numbers that we were expecting him to. And Honestly, he's hasn't really lived up to the hype that we were expecting him to be. I'll let Will go because I feel like I talked a lot. So, Jordan, I have another thing to add. <clears throat> with sorry, I, I completely skipped over your question, but you were talking about the free agents we had, and you named the big one. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I think Carl Joseph is an underrated signing by the Browns, the former first rounder. 
out of uh, West Virginia. I, I don't know why, but I feel like, yeah, he only had four interceptions in the first four seasons with Oakland. But I feel like he has a lot of potential, and I think a new change, a, a change of scenery could be big for him. And honestly, Andrew Berry has done a great job adding to that offense, but the defense still needs a lot of work. And I think Carl Joseph is a piece that might end up working out. Uh, I agree with you, Will. I like Carl Joseph. I think he's automatically better than Morgan Burnett. So if you just automatically make that assumption, then the defense is technically, at that position at least, better. Yeah. Um, I like yeah, they, they lost a lot on defense. Which Yeah, they did. Um, hurt us so much this year. I personally was a big hater of Kirksey and Schobert. Um, if you really do a deep dive into their stats – Together, when they play at the same time, we're a bottom defense. When they play apart, we're a bottom defense. They make big plays, no doubt. It was Pro Bowl Joe Schobert had some huge picks last year and over the past two years. Um, but, I mean, if you're not sure, it doesn't matter. It was like Greg Williams' defense, we were the highest, whatever, turnover. We were like the second or third team with the most forced turnovers but we were the 28th ranked defense so it's kind of like if baker mayfield throws 30 touchdowns wow but if we lost every game it's like it doesn't matter so schober i was actually okay with him walking because i thought we were going to put a lot of money into it and i don't think he has much more upside i have never been a kirksey fan i thought kirksey had his best year as rookie year and then every year after he just made himself vocal he so was always he, hurt, too. I felt like he was always hurt. I oh, can't remember him on the field. It where, was no surprise to me when he got hurt. Absolutely no surprise. He his, He's just vocal. He just talks. So it looks. So that's how he gets a captain, you know? So then he's a captain. And he yeah. was the longest tenured Brown, I think, besides. He might have been the longest tenured Brown with Betonio. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. yeah, he's captain. But then it's like, dude, your captain's never on the field. And when he is, we're still a bottom defense. However, I'm I'm with you. We there there's a huge hole at linebacker still. Um, I have a dream of fixing the Browns defense with two moves, two simple moves, guys. Jadeveon Clowney on a two-year, fifteen million dollar contract, and Isaiah Simmons falling to us, and boom, your defense is fixed like that. Two years, fifteen million. That's that's what it is, man. Number one overall pick. Multiple good sack seasons. I know he's injured. I know he's a little moodish, but wait, I, I just, and a half per year or like fifteen a year. Fifteen for two years. He was Mr. Marketing guy. He wants Coming twenty. In. He only wants twenty. I'd pay more than that. No, easy. Clowny. Yeah. Clowny all the time. I yeah, easy, easy, dude. All the time here. Yo. He's only played – he's only played – his average games played is 10. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But for I would reason, the Browns trying – go ahead, Will. No, go ahead. I was going to say I would have expected him to want more. For some reason, the Browns trying to get to Davian Clowney is the same as trying to find a Loch Ness Monster. It's – you hear this every single offseason. Oh, the Browns and Clowney, the Browns and Clowney. No one's make, No one's pulling the, the trigger on that. I I agree with you, Brendan. I don't I didn't like it. I was kind of annoyed. I'm like I don't see this, but I th- refer you back to Michael Kendricks last year, who actually never played for us as he was yeah. found guilty of fraud. But <laughs> <laughs> he uh, it was like boom, we had gotten Odell. We were already getting better. Like we were just we kept accumulating talent. Maybe it was even the Hard Knocks year. Maybe it was the year before that. Yeah, year before, we just kept getting talent, and Kendricks was like a top linebacker and we just signed him out of nowhere and Clowney wouldn't be out of nowhere. Cause there's been rumors, but it's like, I mean, you still have 37 million with limited moves to make. Why not give him a two year, one year deal? You really only have to pay, which I guess. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to have the guy because I mean, we need him at this point. I'd pay him. I'd pay him not more than two years and not more than 15 million, but they don't have, if he was going back to Seattle, why would he not have signed already? Yeah. If and they didn't have Olivia Vernon. the Jets. If we don't have Olivia Vernon, I think it's a done deal. Look, let's go. Let's jump in that rabbit hole. Guys, Brendan, <laughs> you let's 
You tell me okay. first. Olivier Vernon makes $15 million. You can cut Olivier Vernon and get no penalty. You free $15 million immediately. Why is he still on our roster? I feel like Vernon was a mistake bringing him here to Cleveland. He's a decent uh, guard, I mean, and edge rusher, but he's just a waste of, of money on the, on the team. I agree. I'm I'm gonna put him on the same pedestal as Dwayne Bow, and I know I'm missing somebody else that took it. Sean Rogers took our money. Like I'm gonna put him up there, but it's it's why are you waiting? I'd rather have Jadevian, and then you can take all that money and put it towards Clowney. You guys want to hear something crazy? Hit me. So Vernon plays 16 games. Every game for the first five years of his career goes down to 12, goes down to 11. The Browns decide, why not we get him? He plays 10 for Cleveland. His average tackle a season goes about from 45. He gets 24 with Cleveland. And then he had three and a half sacks when he averaged over eight every year. And we think it's a good idea to keep him on the roster. It's just, even if his upside hits. We got, we got him after his peak. That's all. That's all. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's why the yeah. Browns always do. We always get guys who play great for other teams. And then they come here. I feel like that's going to be the case with Kareem Hunt. I honestly do. Kenny Britt. Kenny Britt. That's who I missed. Kenny Britt got the bag. Oh, my God. Kenny Britt. Was he the guy that could never catch? I mean, I know we've had a lot of guys who couldn't catch. But so I mean, hit his tell me, why, why is Vernon still on the roster? I'd take Clowney over. I don't any, know. Any day. Um, He's I a mean, Dorsey guy. And... Andrew Barry, I feel like, is – he liked Dorsey, and whoever Dorsey brought in, he, does, he like, wants to keep. Yeah, I worry about um, – that is – I don't I, – we don't want to keep circling back to it, but um, is Andrew Barry the type of guy that a year ago would have traded for Odell Beckham? Not at all. He doesn't have enough experience and doesn't, doesn't have enough leverage in the league yet to try and make a deal like that. Dorsey's well, been around for like, 20 to 30 years. Technically, is Odell Beckham a John Dorsey guy, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. if he gives you any trouble, then like the analytic calculator in his mind kicks on and he, his nerd notes, and he's like, oh, he only catches this many balls for this many yards, and he's only going to go worse, and I have to get rid of him. It's just like that's another thing I worry about, getting off topic. but So no. my dream scenario – you get Simmons. He shores up your your linebacking core. I wouldn't say shores up, but makes it better. And then Clowney's your opposite pass rusher from Miles Garrett. Yeah. Which is, and then I think you're still okay at corner. I like Denzel. I like Greedy, and I like Money Mitch. And yeah. I thought Kevin Johnson was a good signing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a really good corner room, actually. Even if you do get hurt. Yeah. Some, and somebody's gonna. I. Well, don't okay. somebody will get hurt. Oh, for sure. Well, let's look at the linebackers that we have now. Mac Wilson. Mac Wilson. I, I like the guy. He's apparently loves Cleveland for some whatever reason. Sione Takitaki and Willie Harvey. There's are... definitely a gap. After Mac Wilson to Takitaki, there's a giant gap, Brendan. Giant gap. For sure. Yeah, I don't even know where Takitaki's at. Like, we couldn't, you could not gauge what type DJ of player Goodson. he was. Brendan, can I, I want to I wanna say something. Trayvon Young. It might make you guys laugh. It might make you think. So you look at the Browns' depth chart. Mac Wilson's the first string uh, out, outside linebacker. You look at middle linebacker. First string's empty, and they have Taki Taki second string. So that just goes to show, like, the gap. I mean, he's the only one there, and he's still not the first string linebacker. Uh, yeah, there's there's a couple of names I've heard that they still might pursue. Um Nathan Zagura of Cleveland Browns Daily is, like, obsessed with Nigel Bradham. I don't know Nigel Bradham, but... Um, if you can... I've been trying to find, like, linebackers in free agency who are still... Or I don't know who could, they could trade for at this point. I mean... Also, Thomas Davis came out Thomas of retirement. Has been. They should have been all over that. We should have... I don't know if... I, I don't. I know you're not going to like this opinion, Bill, but I think we should have re-signed Schobert. I mean, if you knew it was going to go down like this, I thought we'd have one of them. They, I, they lose both. 
when they didn't even, didn't even have like a good backup plan. I mean, they just I'm, let them. They let them walk. Yeah. Out well, the door. no. Here's the thing. Even though Schobert left, they still they cut Kirksey, which I 100% agree with. You can't be paying a guy like that who hasn't played in like two years. And the only thing that I, I mean, Schobert I, had a lot of upside to him last that's year. Right. He's only 26, and he's definitely better than what we have right now. I mean, which is back. I mean, I think. We don't have anything right now. We have one outside linebacker who's worth talking about. And you have a guy like Mac Wilson, who's your number one linebacker. You're... It's not going to be a good year for the Browns defense at all. Yeah, I thought that they'd at least bring one of those guys back. And I think that was my main thought was, while I wasn't a huge fan of either of those guys, I knew we'd have one of them, right? So now it's like you have neither – um, it's ironic because Taki Taki was a higher draft pick than Mac Wilson, and I feel like Taki Taki couldn't even crack the starting lineup okay. last year Here, with here's injuries. The here's the thing: Why are we going for an offensive tackle at number ten when you, we already have a pretty substantial O line? I mean, I you, you, you bring in Conklin. Why are we going for a linebacker at ten? I think they're in a really awkward spot. Yeah, here's my thinking of it, Brendan. You have I know going for a linebacker at 10 isn't a very popular thing to do, but... Bill touched on this last episode. It's really hard for linemen to change positions. And when you have Batonio, Treader, left guard and center, that's set. And then Conklin's a right tackle. We still don't have a left tackle. And a left tackle is a key part to an offense. And honestly, other than Simmons... There's a gap till the next linebacker. I don't think the next linebacker, I mean, I guess you could argue edge rusher, but linebacker, like true linebacker, I don't think goes till the 20s. So that's why either the Browns, if they have 10 and Simmons falls, you take him, but you're taking no tackle if he doesn't, or you trade back if you want a linebacker. You can afford that. Yeah, I'm with Will. I think 10 is such a, a bad spot because – to get a linebacker because Simmons is gone and that's your best option. I just, I broke it down so many ways guys. And it's like, and that's why you're, you're hearing about the Browns trading down because they don't want to be at 10. It's it's just a tough spot to be in. I think it's that. And I think, I think um, I said it when we did our mock drafts, um, Denver is going to be in a position where if they don't trade up, they're going to miss out on the big boys. There's, there's depth at the receiver, but it's literally like, you know, like here and then here, and they don't want to get the guy down here. They want Judy, Lamb, or Rugs, and I think that's why the Browns probably will trade back because you go to thirteen, and then 16. I don't know. I think they probably get what a, a second rounder, maybe maybe a third to move yeah. back like that. But yeah, you get sixteen, not thirteen. I mean, I like Patrick Queen, and I like Kenneth Murray, but it's kind of like ten early. For the season we had, man, it's like I either want Simmons or I really don't want a first-round linebacker. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Exactly, like when I'm looking at my mock draft right now, Kenneth Murray's the first linebacker taken after Simmons, and that's 24th overall. Yeah, and it's like how many scenarios – if there were 10 drafts, I'd say there's one draft where everything falls perfectly that the Browns could get um, Simmons, and a lot of it is – the Chargers and Dolphins passing on Tua. Yeah. And then the Jaguars have to like Herbert. It's like that. That's your key is it has to happen. And then the Giants can't be enticed with him. The Panthers can't be enticed with him. Like, and then you don't need any wild card teams trading up. It's like, that's crazy. Something's going to happen in there. And that's where I'm worried about Andrew Barry in his first NFL draft. Is he going to be able to make – trades that makes sense to go get the guys that we want and if if, i think the best case scenario is for him to trade down and just see who's available wherever he ends up and perhaps uh, like you said well bill i mean that's probably with denver so with andrew barry he i don't know i don't want to say that he was like even with those guys but if you recall his first draft that he was really involved with the browns was the draft where we had three first-round picks, um, Njoku, Peppers, and 
I can't remember the first one. That was back in 14? I think it's 16. 16. I, I know, know I know people, he was with that analytics team, so I mean I, I know he was a part of taking Corey Coleman and I remember um he was also a part of taking three first round picks and he just really didn't hit I, and it wasn't his draft, he wasn't the GM, but I don't want him to have multiple picks. Justin so, Gilbert. Is that that's fourteen. That was a horrible pick. No, no, oh. no. What draft? Sixteen you uh, said? 2016, yeah. So um, Corey so, Coleman. That was it. What? Emmanuel Ogba in 16. Maybe it's 17. Okay, my point is I would rather he stay at the top and he has to make a good, close pick, then he drops, and all of a sudden the analytics kick in. Yo, we took Miles Garrett number one. 2017, he took Miles Garrett one, Jabril Peppers, and Njoku. Njoku. So for me, I'd rather he just stays at 10. He has to make a good safe pick at 10 and then let him wheel and deal. I don't want to start dropping. Dropping from 10 to 13 is fine. But if you are wherever the Broncos are, I think, right? 13, 14? 16. Jeez, okay. Yeah. I don't want to see this guy drop, and then he's taking Patrick Queen and Delpit in the first round or something. Or, you know, it's just like, take take that top tackle that's there, man. Sorry, six, or 15, not 16. But still, I agree. Yeah, and at 10, which is probably going to end up being, we're keeping our fingers crossed for Tristan Wirfs or Mackay Becton. And... It was weird. Just heard Mackay Becton flagged for taking having like weed in his system from months ago, which is just why they flag that kind of stuff. Is beyond me. He's in college and he's gonna do that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I think that's what it's gonna come down to. Worse or Becton? And I know you guys said that you're on the worst train, uh, and I'm on. Uh, back then, having those two, either of those two guys on the on that line is gonna be huge for the Browns. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I'm still locked in on the same. I just think it has. To, it's gonna be harder to get a trade done, just in general with technology and just nerves and your first draft. You know, I I I've watched a lot of draft stuff and and hard knocks and just getting ready for you know player stuff like that, and it's a lot of GMs just say, hey, in your first draft, you just take take who's there. Don't try trading down. Don't try trading around. Um, you know, I'm for it. Just Wirfs, Thomas, Becton, get a left tackle, man. It just, it's a stack tackle draft where you need a left tackle. Like, it's written out there for you. Yeah, here's, here's honestly the perfect draft for the Browns. 10th overall, Simmons falls to you. 41st, Del Pitt. Then 74th, Bill, third round pick. You have, honestly, Ezra Cleveland's a guy that's been talked about. Again, we talked about this during our mock draft. He's been talked about first round, third round. Maybe he falls there. Or Trey Adams from Washington, who's six foot eight, three eighteen. Maybe you get a left tackle third round because, like you said, it's a deep left tackle draft. And are we, I mean, I know Brendan's talked about it. Like we're not off Trent Williams. It's not over. Yeah, that's that's true. That guy hates the Redskins. <laughs> he does. I wouldn't mind going for him, to be honest. Because if you get Trent Williams, then that, that fills that position before draft day. And it stalls you a yeah. year. It's like maybe yeah. next year you're picking at 20, and then it's yeah. just easier for you to say, I just need a tackle at 20. And 20, exactly. you don't feel bad about reaching. You just yeah. kind of take who you need. But I, I'm the same, man. That, you're at 10, and you need a tackle, do it. Ezra Cleveland – by the way, would be the first athlete to have the name Cleveland and play in Cleveland. I dig it. Heard of that on the radio this morning. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Andrew Barry is going to pull, you know, Sonny Weaver Jr. Uh, this year, uh-huh. but um, but the whole draft this year is going to be really weird. Just if there's going to be any technical difficulties that's going to occur. 
uh, if I heard, I heard yesterday they went through like a dry run, um, like an actual mock draft. And after the first pick, the Bengals had an issue trying to get the pick in. And after that, it was pretty easy going. Um, it's just, it's, that's going to gonna be huge. Let's see, I'm excited to watch it and just see how that looks. Did you see the Lions, the report about the Lions? Uh, Matt Patricia is going to have – uh, it's either Matt, Matt Patricia or their GM is going to have their IT guy live in an RV outside his house for three days. <laughs> and so that anytime he needs him, he can come in the house real quick. You feel like with the NFL, they would give them the best technology there is to have. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how you got to feel. But it's like, I don't know what system they're using. I don't know how they're saying only maybe you say only this man can put the pick in, you know, it's like only Andrew Barry can send your pick in. And it's like, again, ESPNfantasy.com. Is somebody in their house? I don't know. I know everyone's like supposed to be at their own houses and you can't have any um, other like Andrew Barry's the only Browns exact to be in the room at the same time. Um, I found it funny that Goodell's announcing all of his picks in his basement. Yeah, I do. I do think that's funny. Um, I mean, I imagine it'll just be something nice. It'll just be like a nice little. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be sitting in a big chair or something. I don't. I no can't imagine. No booing this year, though. There will be booing somehow. Somehow, you gonna boo him? I'm booing him. Um, it will be I, in his basement. Big time, buddy. I'll be in the man cave. Uh, I do want to add, I know we might be getting to this, Brendan, but um, just some guys for the Browns, not necessarily having to, anything to do with the draft, just roster-wise that need to have big years this year. Um, yeah. Number one is Larry Ogunjobi. Uh, for me, uh, defensive tackle, they're clearly going to stay at a 4-3 so that you, he has a job, I think. He's not going to get beat out. But he has kind of suffered at times. He didn't have a great year last year. He's had um, not injuries that have kept him out, but he's had injuries uh, that, you know, you'd like him to have gotten past um, and and kind of held him back a little bit. And it's just – it's getting close to the last – I think it's the last year of his contract. Um, and they already signed Andrew Billings, who's pretty good, and it'll, I think will push him for the job. And then Sheldon Richardson's on a couple year deal with us, who's been really good. Um, I think Ogunjobi had a torn bicep at one point, and he hurt his ankle last year uh, and missed one of our wins. So it, it's a big year for him and a guy I really liked when they got him from Charlotte. But uh, he's going to need to have a big year to get a contract, guys. They're not giving out contracts if you're not analytically proven. Yeah, I can agree with Ogan Joby as a guy that definitely needs to have a big year. Uh, another one, Olivier Vernon. Um, he, you came to this team, you you were definitely underwhelming last year. Only played ten of the sixteen games, had two point four tackles a game. You got to have a bigger impact because um, again, he, he it's a contract season for him. So even if the Browns don't re-sign him, he, he's going to hit the free agency market and not be worth anything to anyone if he doesn't have a big year. And then I'm going to say anyone in the linebacking core that might have to take on a bigger role, they're definitely going to have to have a big year. Uh, Mac Wilson's going to need to have a big year being the leader of that linebacking core as of right now. And maybe Taki Taki, he might have to step up. But someone in that core is going to have to step up in order for the Browns to perform well on defense. I think it's a good thing that we're all looking at the defensive side here because um, I'm looking at the secondary. Bree Williams going into his second year, does he make a better adjustment? Um, because in our division, you got, I know Baltimore is the primary running team, but Lamar Jackson, you learn that he can't just rely on that the whole year. He's going to be able to throw the ball and you're going to have Joe Burrow, uh, in the division two, that whole secondary is going to have to, uh, be really improved, but specifically Williams, because he has guys, uh, on his back. Terrence Mitchell, Shelter Redwine, Kevin Johnson that are looking for full playing time positions. Um, 
I mean, I, did, I wasn't a huge fan of Williams last year. He's going to have to really uh, win me over uh, this year. But I think that's – I mean, he's, he was a Dorsey pick, but another Dor- Dorsey pick that is just really undersized as a safety. Um, I, I think he got injured last year, right, at some point? Yeah. Yeah, him and uh, remember him and Ward were the hamstring boys. They they did. I they think keep four, getting hurt. Denzel they Ward's four gonna, weeks. I think another they question. Four weeks Denzel Ward, can he go a full season without getting hurt? All this tackling, he leads with his head. Also, guys, don't be surprised if they take a corner. I've seen three mock drafts where their third round yeah. pick is Damon Arnett from Ohio I State. I would not be mad at that at all. No, I wouldn't be either, and I'd love it because I'd push him. Kevin Johnson's okay, but Kevin Johnson's a nickel corner, and that's it. And yep. he had clear, he was a first round pick that hasn't gotten a full second contract yet, so he we, clearly had some issues. We picked up Andrew Sandejo too, right? He's safety. Yeah. Safety, yeah. Okay. Sandejo and Carl Joseph signing become a lot better too if we get Delpit at forty one, because then we have depth. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think the Browns have a free safety right now. Yeah. Besides red wine, red wine plays free safety. But um, if you switch sides of the ball, guys, uh, Njoku's in a really awkward spot. Um, Brendan mentioned him because uh, his rookie year, he played with Kaiser, Kessler, and uh, Charlie Whitehurst. So I just don't fault him too much for that. Touchdown, Jesus. And then year two, he had 500 yards, four big touchdowns. And just a lot, a lot of good, good plays in Baker's rookie year. Um, specifically, he's a red zone target. Just toss him the ball. Dude's huge, good leaping ability. Gets up, gets it. So last year, he got hurt in the Rams game. He broke his wrist in the Rams game. So he only played two games. Um, number one, I thought Freddie Kitchens put him on routes where he ran the route like a receiver. Um, David Njoku has good vertical speed if he has the ball first and room. So he has to catch the ball, stop, move, and go. He can't catch it over the top or just, you know, run a curl route, catch it, shake his guy, and then go. He has to be open, catch it, have plenty of room. So his routes, I'm excited for him to get a tight end offense because he can get tight end catches. Um, And he did do well in the red zone. I think he had four touchdowns in 2018 and I think three were in the red zone. He was really good over there. Good hands, good size. Um, yeah, he had a really good catch against the Chargers a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was big, from, just over the top. He, yeah, that's the kind of tight end he is. And it's fascinating to see our tight end depth chart. We just picked up Farrell Brown today again. So okay. Farrell's back. I know they like, they like Carl Steven Carlson, who's pretty like good. Carlson as well. Um, um, my concern him. is contracts, though, guys. It it yeah. just you got more and more guys coming up that need paid. So yeah. Miles will need paid, and it's not the like it, it's not the NBA where they're gonna rush to get that deal done. Though after what happened with Schobert, I don't think they're gonna hesitate anymore to get a deal done fast if they can. But so coming up, Miles needs a contract, and clearly you're gonna pay that unless he gets suspended again. Um, which I don't see happening. I don't see why that would happen. But um, Larry. Again, Ogunjobi is up for something if you want to do that. And then you have to assess, do you want to lock down two tight ends for big money in a, in a two tight end offense, but with this coach? It's just it's going to be a big year for him. Yeah, I agree with Njoku. Definitely needs a big year. Uh, a touchdown that I remember from him is the one against the Bengals where it seemed like he caught it at the five and it took about 25 seconds to get in, but it was all the help that he got. That was when I always Pushed remember. in by the line, yeah. Yeah. But uh, another guy that really needs a big year, Baker Mayfield. A very, very, very good rookie season. Everyone's like, this is the best quarterback the Browns have had since 1999, which he probably is. But second year, you definitely saw the holes in the line. He was rushed, forced some passes, having so many targets, he felt that he had to get it to the ball to people when it wasn't, when they weren't particularly open. And I think this year, Definitely adding Conklin, maybe even a left tackle in the draft. Or if you get Trent Williams, he'll have much more time. And I think he just needs to realize he can't force passes. He has to go where it's open and just play his style of game because his style of game is winning. I mean, he's a winner. We saw it at Oklahoma. We saw it his rookie year. He won seven games. And we know he has the potential. But this year is a big year because signing Case Keenum, I think, is the kind of thing where you're like, 
listen, we're not scared to put him in a game if you're really struggling. Yeah, it is a little motivation to, for him to get going because uh, even if you add in the fact that Stefanski coached Keenum um, in Minnesota, so, I mean, you're, they're buddies right there. So if Baker doesn't do well, you're going to a coach-quarterback combination that worked, that took the Vikings to the playoffs. Um, you, yeah, I, mean, I just feel like the offense didn't work last year for Mayfield. And Freddie Kitchens just didn't implement something that is comfortable with Baker Mayfield's style. Mm-hmm. It, you, you had too many trying to force them, you know, lobbing it up into the corners of the end zone that didn't work. Um, now, not every interception, obviously, was his fault. There's a lot of drop oh, balls. A lot of drop. Um, I think I read a stat that said uh, seven were not his fault. So he'd be at... Yeah, 22 touchdowns and 14 interceptions, which is great, but it's not nearly as bad as 22, 20. Still not good. But you and have he, to count them. You have they just count. Yeah. Them. yeah, yeah. Here's my thing, also, Brendan, with you saying Freddie Kitchens' play calling style. You have two guys in Odell and Landry where if you're running slants more often than he did, and not just verticals, you're running slants. Most secondaries in the NFL are probably going to get lost a lot of the time. But this guy, no, you have. 0.75 seconds to get a pass off because your offensive line is below average. So let's run a deep pass because that makes sense. And that's why Kitchens didn't work out. You can't run the deep ball if you don't have enough time to throw the ball deep. And that's what Baker does well. He gets the ball out quick. Yeah. And that's that's what you saw in at Oklahoma and in his first year with us. Yeah. You, you got to have a offense that and, – and that's why I like the fact that they do slants all the time. Yeah. And yeah, I like, hey, how annoying was that stat last year, guys? I think I heard that stat a million times was every game, you know, if Baker gets it out in 2.7 seconds, the Browns are 5-0. and They had graphics for that in every broadcast. Every game. I'm like, dude, I know. I'm sure every quarterback's really good if they threw the ball in five sec- two seconds. I'm sure they saw a really good play. Yeah, but that's just the thing. I mean, that's, that's just the thing with Baker. He, he's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Tom Brady where he can – step up in the pocket and in a shotgun and have, you know, buy himself plenty of time to take a deep shot down the sideline. I think he's better at buying himself time, but when you have that line, you, you didn't have time to begin with. And that's the problem. Yeah. You definitely got to add that line if you want to add a deep game into your system. And Kitchens try to have a deep game more often than not with a line that didn't allow for a deep game, which is why you really had to play the quick pass. And again, going back to the additions on free agency, Hooper's huge because you look back to Oklahoma. Odell had uh, Marquise Brown, C.D. Lamb, and Mark Andrews, and now he has those top two receivers with a Hooper, who has solidified him as a very good pass catcher in the NFL, especially the last season with Atlanta. And I think it's going to be a good addition for that team for him to have not only those three, but in Joku if he can stay healthy. And I think adding Conklin again, buying more time. If you get Williams or left tackle at 10, I think this could be a really good year for Baker after a sophomore slump. Yeah, I think the offense is just supposed to be simpler, too. I think yeah. and it's two tight ends. They start every game. I've watched a lot of uh, Minnesota. I've gone back and watched Stefanski's offense just to see what we're going to be looking at. And they just work so hard to sell the run, to really punch it down your throat and let you think that that is the option. And then revert to play i mean the play action is gonna be ridiculous on this team guys it, mm-hmm. it should just be incredible to najoku hooper odell and jarvis running loose on a play action should be incredible yeah when you have chubb and hunt and those both both those backs can also go out and catch it with the best of them yeah and you have hunt yeah. hunt from start to finish this year yeah you should he, sh- yeah. he should be ready to go and uh i mean i don't know what training camp and all that's gonna look like this year but um he, you know, he should be as in shape as anybody else, and he'll know the playbook like anyone else. And um, I don't know. I think with the virus, maybe it's just going to be a weird start to the year. But I like the offense. I think it's simple, and I think it's made to make Baker and the offense look really good. And then defensively, like I said, guys, I mean, get Clowney. Um, Robert Ngakwe N- from the Jaguars wants to be traded. That's another good pass rusher. And it's like, 
I just it, it feels like we have such big holes, but once you fill them, then you really feel like the whole thing's good. You know, just really get it going. Um, I, I it just there's no reason it shouldn't work. That's I feel why like I feel, feel like the draft this year is one of the is even bigger than last year. Uh, mm-hmm. There's because there's so many holes to fill defensively, not you know offensively really. I mean we're pretty good with our weapons. Maybe add a little depth there, uh, adding a wide receiver. Um, but it is a huge uh, draft this year, especially for Andrew Barry, who's trying to, you know, solidify himself as a big GM in the league. Over under, uh, guys, Browns win this year. What's the number? Eight. I have over, but it's right at nine or ten. It's really hard to win in the NFL. That's all I've learned. It's just – Everybody's so good. Everybody's an athlete. Every every smart every coach is a genius. Every GM put together the roster. It's really hard to win. And even with our roster, we're in a really tough division. The Bengals, um, I don't believe this, but I've heard scouts and whatnot think they have a really good roster coming in. Um, and that's on top of Baltimore. So um I don't know. I'll say nine wins. I was gonna say right around eight to 10 range when six of your games are against Lamar Jackson, Ben Roethlisberger, and possibly Joe Burrow. That's tough to see more than that. And then I, it's going to be, it's going to be tough, especially with the defensive holes. Will they be filled? Who's going to play where? Will you have a left tackle? This draft is going to be a big, big deciding factor on the season as well. Who do we get at 10? Do we trade down? Who do we get at 41? Does Del Pitt fall? There's just so many questions to be answered and holes to be filled that this Thursday, this weekend, is going to be a big weekend for Cleveland, along with, obviously, 31 other teams in the NFL. And then there's still trades to be happened. Like, is Trent Williams on the way? Is Ngakwe, is Clowney going to be signed? All these questions need to be answered first. But with this roster right now, with who I think they're going to draft, I would say right around the 8-10 to 10 range as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to be optimistic with this team like I was last year. I'm afraid we're only going to get six or seven um, because that's just the Browns fan in me. Um, We know our opponents, and they said that they're going to announce the actual schedule like 10 days into May, uh, which is going to be exciting. Um, But, yeah, it's the draft is really going to either make me feel better about this team or not even change my feelings on it. Yeah, I agree. I think I'll just have a different feeling once I know these guys are on our roster and these guys are not. Just we're still missing a linebacker, or we're still, um, we you know we our tackle is good, not great, or our tackle we don't know much about. And you know, should we have traded down? I just think there's yeah. going to be a lot to take away from the draft uh, coming up. It's just. It's a big year for the Browns. I think there's a lot of pressure, again, to just get this thing right. Mm-hmm. I will say the Browns did draw a really good schedule this year. Um, you they got, they got the AFC South and NFC East, which I think are two of the easier divisions in the NFL, which includes teams like the Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Texans, and then you got uh, Redskins, Giants, Cowboys, um, who am I missing from that division? Uh, Eagles, who yeah. it seemed like all of them last year around 500 or under. And then the two teams they draw, they drew as a like wild card. You got the Raiders. It's just we did draw a very good schedule, but still, it's hard to. And then the Jets is the other team we drew. So Raiders and Jets are two teams where if you're going to draw the wild card in your schedule, you're happy you got those two. But it's still. A new coach yet again. Um, defense has holes, so it's hard to say. With this schedule, I definitely see 12. No, you can't say that. I mean, I could see this team going 8-8 eight and eight again. <laughs> I, uh, I got two bold yeah. predictions for you guys. Okay. Number one, Titans don't make the playoffs. Okay. Um, well, remember, you've got that extra playoff team now this year. I agree. The, I still that, think I, – I was never a big Derrick Henry guy, and I, I still don't buy it no matter what he did last year. And number two, I think that Tannehill signing is just going to absolutely mirror Blake Portals. 
you're just going to feel like this guy's good, not great, maybe not even good. I don't think they're going to win eight games. I think they'll win maybe seven. Um, but that division is up for grabs. That's the tough part. However, my other I pick is Joe Burrow only winning three games. Man, wouldn't that be something? Well, I, I'm really I just, interested. I just don't in see talk, it. I'm really interested in talking about Burrow uh, next week when we analyze what happened in the draft. Um, he's yeah. an interesting character to try and see if he's going to make it in the NFL. That's man, yeah. It's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be fun playing him twice too. I don't see it with the Bengals. With him, I'm I'm cool on him. I get it. I get the number one pick thing and. Uh, I have some concerns. I have some questions about him, and it's just there are some things that I want to know and I don't understand yet, but, you know, I still think he's going to go number one. Well, guys, definitely fun time right now, the fact that there's an actual sporting event coming up uh, this weekend and on Thursday night, um, the fact that we can actually watch something live now. Um, but uh, before we go um, – Billy, you've now got the uh, throwback Odo Beckham Jr. white jersey on. Um, after analyzing every player now tonight and the Browns releasing their new jerseys last week, what jersey of the new um, set that the Browns released and what player would you get? Knowing no, no, What player would you get knowing that he'll last yeah i'm gonna go jarvis landry what color yeah I'll what, go brown. What, what that jersey? classic brown is beautiful it is not, not the color rush but the traditional yes the traditional yeah. Brown. yeah jarvis has you got a four-year contract he doesn't have a long um he doesn't cause any problems he's definitely a leader the city would go nuts if we lost him um he doesn't have an injury history uh, with Chubb, my other option was Chubb, and uh, there could be a money dispute when he wants a new contract. And then uh, anytime a guy tore an ACL, I get super nervous. No matter, I mean, he's the big dog on campus. He looks really good, but I'll, I'll go. Uh, I think Jarvis is a safe bet. I'm gonna throw. So I, I just want this to be on the table as well. The color rusher by far the worst of the three. I was never really a fan of them. I love the traditional look, though. And I agree with Bill. The brown's beautiful. So I'm going to go with the, the new brown, and I'm going to throw you guys a curveball. New, new guy in town. I, I don't know why. I don't like going with the traditional do- jersey choice. I like going to stadiums and having a different jersey on. That's why I ordered a Tyler Naquin jersey for the Indians. But I would go Jack Conklin. Wow. Interesting. I don't know if that's even going to be in the team shop, but okay. It's not, but I'll get it customized. Yeah, <laughs> I I like I like both traditional. I'm, I'd probably go uh, with the white jersey. Um, I'm in agreement with you. Uh, well, I think I think if they left the stripes on the color rush jersey, that would have been a little better. Um, but I'm gonna go white jersey uh, and and Chubb. I I feel like he's the fan he stays quiet, fan favorite, thousand yard rusher, um, and can last another yeah. three, four years here. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 nice knowing that you're gonna watch the Browns now in actual Browns jerseys. Mac yeah, Wilson. I have, I have a bit of a I have a jersey curse going on right now. Um, I've done okay recently, but before I had. Uh, I got a Duke Johnson jersey. Or no, okay, so it started with Jabril Peppers. So I ordered his jersey, bright orange. I was really excited. And he changed numbers while it was coming. Again, these are all fake jerseys, so they were only like $25 each. But so Peppers, he was, man. Yeah, he was originally number 27. And he changed numbers while I ordered it. He changed to 22. So I had a giant bright orange 27 peppers jersey my next one i ordered was a duke johnson which lasted about a year and then he got traded and then uh-huh. uh i ordered a carlos high jersey that came and everything that was supposed to be orange was bright red on the jersey which was really weird which is what i get for ordering from a chinese website 
Um, and then I ordered yeah, I a Denzel Ward jersey, which came as an adult um, or a kid's small. And it said Cleveland big space. It was huge. It was like Cleveland space, 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 and on the front. <laughs> so I had like four jerseys in a row that were no good. Um, right now I have Odell, Ogan, Joby, and Greedy Williams, um, which we'll see how those go. But I do want one of the new ones. I do too. The only uh, football jerseys yeah. I have right now are both Notre Dame. I don't have any brown jerseys right now because I was never a fan of these jerseys. Sorry, Bill, that you're wearing right now. But I don't like them. <laughs> with- you had a Baker jersey last like last year, didn't you? Didn't you get one of the Color Rush ones, Will? Oh, I hate Color Rush. No, I had. I did have one of the Baker Browns, but I when I got it, I didn't like it, so I just returned it. Yeah. Good move. Uh, it's been a really weird. Like, there's so many teams unveiling new uniforms. The Patriots just did it yesterday. I like the, the Chargers. Chargers. The Chargers, Chargers did good, really yeah. Really nice ones. Uh, the Buccaneers unveiled uh, some new ones going throwback, uh, yeah, which they look good. Atlanta didn't really get good reviews in theirs. There's uh, our- and I know the Rams are supposed to unveil new jerseys, too. It's just been a crazy offseason with New Jersey. Just wait for one of these teams to unveil like a new color wave. Like the Rams are like purple and green. I, they're not like I'm just like throwing out yeah. colors, but like I'm just waiting for like to go back to like a jersey. I don't know. I'm I waiting. will say this: I wish the Browns, and apparently they could still do this, but add orange pants. Same. I like the orange pants with the brown tops. Yeah, yeah. I number one. I thought it was too bad they had to do it in the guys garage is how they shot the video was in this guy's garage and they couldn't use real players they had to use just regular people which really stunk because apparently they planned like a big photo shoot with all the guys and it just would have been nice to see it would have been nice to just wave in somebody's face odell was at the photo shoot so they would try and say that they didn't uh uh trade him anymore and then i don't think they're getting orange pants because i listened to that interview that people think is, is them saying they're going to get orange pants. And uh, the team president, J.W. Johnson, said, I didn't know people wanted orange pants. I'll have to look into that. And then the report said, Browns will look will look into getting orange pants. And I said, I say I'll look into that when I really don't want to do something. So <laughs> I don't think we're getting orange pants. That J.W. Johnson guy is such... A strange I, I don't really know officially what he does yeah he is an interesting cat because i've heard he's been involved in like football stuff but then it's like he spent a whole year on jerseys it's like there's too many guys that there's there's too many names in that office that probably suck up to haslam so much and that's the only reason why they're oh there. yeah but. brennan that is what i didn't get to say so um i know we're trying to wrap up but cowherd was breaking down Oh, yeah, he never got the Coward. Coward was breaking down the Odell situation, and he was like, yeah, the Browns are a bunch of liars. He's like, oh, we're, we like, well, we love Freddie Kitchens. We're keeping him. He, like, did a whole bit. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. Freddie's our guy. We love him. Oh, oh, no, no, we're not trading for Odell. We love Odell, but we're not trading for him. And then they trade for him, and it's like, oh, yeah, Dorsey's our guy. We love Dorsey. You know, they fire Dorsey. They fire Kitchens. He's like, Browns are liars, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, Whoever he, I don't really know this guy. He's like the chief football officer, D Podesta. I'm like, dude, you work in sports media and you don't know who Paul D Podesta is. Like, <laughs> there's a movie about him, bud. <laughs> you know who Brad Pitt is? You know Moneyball guy. Is? That's a great movie. I'm about to I'm watch. I'm getting so mad, dude. I'm like, you don't know who D Podesta is. Don't trash him. I'm like, that's Moneyball, bud. <laughs> and he apparently he's like. Oh yeah, I totally believe this WFAN radio network in New York. Yeah. Like how many times do you have to get that's told your main no? source. Yeah, this guy on on a New York radio show, and I I have a friend that's a big Giants fan. Let me tell you, this Odell Beckham is their ex girlfriend that they cannot get over. <laughs> they love talking about this dude. My friend Ryan loves the Giants. He's all over me about. Odell's causing drama. Oh, not that fun to have him, is it? Oh, looks like you're trading him, bud. I'm like, I don't think so, bud. I'm like, we're keeping him. I'm like, you guys need to get over this dude. I'm like, sorry, you refused to move on from Eli, and the dude got angry. 
Which, man, the, I love seeing the Giants as a huge hot mess now. What what connections does this New York radio host have to the Vikings? No yeah. clue. And then and then <laughs> Schefter, Schefter and them come out as soon as they can to stop it. They're like, this isn't happening. They're like somebody told us no, never talked about it, never discussed it. You know, Mary Kay Cabot jumped on and was like, I was told no, never even talked about. And it's like it's not enough for Colin Cowherd. He has to forget D Podesta. And he can't just accept the fact that it's not happening. He's right. He just keeps saying things until it happens. And then he'll and be like, I agree. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I'm right. Like, I, I told right. you all Philip Rivers was leaving. And it's like, dude, you said 40 things and you hit on Philip Rivers is leaving. <laughs> Something that anyone predicted. I just, like, I just, I just, I just love going Diego. back. Yeah, San Diego. Yeah. I just it's love not- going back to watching his interview with Baker. And Baker just shoots down everything. Baker wearing the undraftable hoodie was the best. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it, – it, it, I listed the reasons earlier, guys. It's just deals don't get done in football that much for trades. I know it seems like it right now because we're in the off season, but not often do trades get done. We just traded for this guy. He has he has 16 games with us. That's it. Uh, and then his value is down. We're not going to resell a year later for half – pennies on the dollar we're just not you look so stupid for doing that yeah and i don't think anybody said would say that odell was bad last year he was he just wasn't great but he was not nobody would say like he was kenny Britt, Dwayne bow then you can get rid of him sure but he was not that bad no he was still he still had close to if not a thousand yards didn't he yeah uh, uh i'm not sure about that yeah, yeah 35 yards on 74 receptions and four touchdowns. All I'll say is this, after having a pretty emotional uh, career with the Giants and him, like, flaming up and kicking the – having a fight with the kicking net and everything, after having such a bad year that he – not only him personally did, but the Browns overall did, he handled it pretty well. I mean, he, he stayed pretty – quiet and out of the news i know he had that one meltdown with kitchens on the sideline but so did landry and i would have too <laughs> so it i don't know maybe he will have a bounce back year and we all we're all praying praying that he does yeah don't don't talk to a giants fan about odell they they're not objective they don't know what to say about the guy <laughs> well i think after another year we i think we will <laughs> but Guys, it's, it's draft week. Uh, I'm getting ready to watch draft day on Thursday just to make myself feel better about it going in and hyping myself up. I love me some Kevin Costner. So uh, that'll wrap up this uh, third episode of Full Time Out. Next week, we'll analyze the 2020 NFL drafts, see where teams went wrong, where teams went right to the Browns, get it right, uh, and see who the top picks were. Uh, so from Phil Beebe, Will Branza, I'm Brendan Vinny saying stay safe, wash your hands, and have a great week. <laughs>